Let's jump into problem 83A, a materials purchases budget. This one's a bit bigger than our previous few budgets and it's a bit more involved. And I always wanna caution students, don't try to memorize word for word every description, every detail I write. You want to just make sure you're going in the right direction. And I find these things are a logic puzzle and it's better to solve the logic puzzle than to memorize the solution because if you memorize a solution, if you forget a line, it all falls apart. And I've certainly as a professor seen it fall apart for students where even if you don't get the right words in this side, but you just describe what you're doing, that'll get you most of the marks. So uh, that's a better way to learn this stuff. So let's go. Shang Company manufactures faux leather bags. Each bag takes 0.5 yards of material. I guess you measure material by the yard. Uh, and the material costs $5 per yard. The company had 1,500 yards of material on hand at the beginning of January and required enough ending monthly materials to be on hand to meet 10% of the following month's production requirements. Uh, so this sounds like a production budget and it's a lot like a production budget. It really is similar. Uh, the company's production budget follows and there's our production budget for January, February, and March. Uh, and it notes that the company expects to reduce 40,000 units in April. So we're asked to do a production or, uh, material purchases budget, pardon me, uh, and we provide the number of yards and the dollar value of the inventory. So this is a little bit tricky because we have required production in units. This is how many handbags we're going to make, faux leather bags. Uh, we also, so our unit is the unit, the bag. We also have the unit being the yard of material, that's another unit we have to be concerned with. And a third unit is the dollar value of all of this. So dollars, yards, units, bags, it's a, it's a jumble, right? And so you gotta really keep it straight and be clear headed about what we're trying to do here. And first time you do it, you're not gonna be clear headed at all, but hopefully by the end of this video, you will be. So let's start with a title though. That's very straightforward, Shang Company. And then a uh, uh, the name of the budget we're making, materials purchases budget. And then these get dated for the quarter ended. And then the last day of the quarter, which of course is March 31st. Uh, the heading again, just the months of the quarter, January, February, March, and quarter. So our starting point is often, and, and this is no exception, just the given information here, the required production. Now this required production is in units, right? It's in handbags. And we're going to convert this to yards because we want to, we're in our materials, of course, we're, we're ordering yards of material. So we're saying, if I want to make, let's just do January. If I want to make 30,000 handbags, how many yards of material is that? So how, how am I going to figure that out? Well, it takes half a yard per bag. So let's multiply this by 0.5. And here's where I, not that I'm totally freestyling, but like the wording here, right? What do I want to say? I want to multiply this by 0.5. So I want to times 0.5 in here. So I'm going to say times, uh, and again, I'm just like off the cuff here times, uh, material per unit, right? And so it's 0.5 yards per unit. And so uh, now we have our required production, not in units, but in yards. So if I want to make 30,000 units, I'm going to need 15,000 yards of whatever this material is that we use to make handbags. By the way, is that a lot or a little? I have no idea. It's half a yard. You know, I, I just made up the number. I'm a guy that doesn't own any handbags and doesn't know anything about sewing or material. I don't know if that's a lot or a little uh, in terms of the material that I've suggested. Um, okay. So we're going to take 15,000 yards of material. Okay. So... 
that's useful thing to know. So if I'm going to make 30,000 bags, I need 15,000 yards of material, but I don't want to run out of material. I don't want to run down to zero. And the question says, well, we want to have at least 10% left over. It gives us a little bit buffer. So I want to have 10% of the next month's need. So I got to do February now. 35,000 times 0 0.5 is uh, 17,500. And so this is saying, I want to have 10% of that 17.5 on hand at the end of January. So we'll say add desired ending. Now, rather than saying inventory, inventory, it is inventory, but I'm going to say ending materials inventory, right? It's not our desired ending inventory in units of bags. It's our desired ending yards of material, and it's 10% of February. So 10% of 17.5 is 1,750. So our total materials needed... Fifteen thousand plus seventeen fifty is sixteen seven fifty. Okay, so I need sixteen seven fifty. What would mitigate this is if I already had some materials, and we do. It says the company had fifteen hundred yards of material to start the month, uh, so I don't need to order those. So deduct beginning materials. And this is a calculation that's appeared a lot in our class, right? We're always adding ending inventory, deducting beginning inventory, very common uh, calculation for us to see. Sometimes we're adding beginning and deducting ending. This is a very common theme anyway. So we're going to deduct 1500 here. 16750 minus 1500 is 15250. And so this is total materials to be purchased. Now, again, that, that like heading, total materials to be purchased, I just came up with that. It's a clumsy way of saying it, but the, you get the idea, right? And so when my students answer these questions, if I get the idea and they get the right numbers, I'm okay with, you know, a myriad you have a wide range of explanations. And even if they do this in a slightly different order here, that's okay with me too. As long as they've understood the thought process and there's a logical thought process and they land in the right place, I will be happy. Again, talk to your instructor. Uh, they might be looser or tighter than I am around that. Okay. Let's just sort of reiterate what's happening in January. I'm going to make 30,000 handbags. Each bag takes half a yard of material. Therefore, I need 15,000 yards of material. I also want to have some material left over for next month. We've said 1750 is the number. So in total, I need 16,750. I have 1,500 yards of material sitting there from last month. So I don't need to buy those. So I'm going to need to buy 15,250. The final thing is how much am I going to spend? Well, it's five bucks a yard. So let's multiply by price per yard or per unit of material times $5. 15,250 times five. It's going to be $76,250, which is uh, uh, <laughs> materials purchased. in dollars <laughs> so it says provide both the number of yards and dollar value of inventory to purchase maybe i should have said dollar value of inventory to purchase but it's 76 to 50. okay now february and march will be easy let's just i'll do the top part of march here 38,000 times 0 0.5 38,000 times 0.5 is 19,000. now i have enough information to do my february uh so february I'm going to make 35,000 handbags, half a yard each, 17,500 uh, yards of material are needed, plus 10% of March, 10% of 19,000 is 1,900. 175 plus 1,900 is 19,400. I deduct the beginning inventory. The beginning of February is the same as the end of January. It's 1750. So I deduct 1750, 194 minus 1750 is 17650 
and I multiply that by five dollars to give me the um, dollar value of this order. 1760650 times five is 88250. And I hope this is sort of, I know it's, it's easy to get like tunnel vision. You're learning something new. It's a complicated concept. But if you take a step back and think, oh yeah, I'm, I'm going to plan on what I'm going to sell. That tells me when the money's coming in. It also tells me what I got to make. Plan on what I got to make. And that tells me, well, what I need to order and soon we'll do like how much staff we need, right? Big picture, this all kind of funnels together. And, and it's like, well, when's the money coming in? When's the money going out? Am I going to run out of money? Like these are things you need to be concerned with. And they all sort of uh, stem from like how much you plan to sell in the next month or the next quarter. And are you going to be ready for it? That's essentially what we're trying to figure out here. Our desired ending inventory for March. Well, it's going to be 10% of April. April, we're making 40,000 units, but it's not 10% of that. It's 10% of the yards in April. So again, that's where the uh, 40,000 came from. So I'm going to need 20,000 yards for April. I take 10% of that. It's 2,000. 19,000 plus 2,000 is 21,000. I deduct the beginning, which was 1,900. The beginning of March is the end of February. End of February is 1,900. 21,000 minus 1,900 is... What is it? 19,100. Math in one's head is, is hazardous. <laughs> Let's make sure on that. Uh, uh, 21,000 minus 1,900. Yeah, 19,100 times 5. $95,500. Okay, now for the quarter. Our required production for the quarter is 103,000 times 0 0.5. What would that be? 65,000. No, not 65. Oh my gosh. Let's do it in a calculator. I'm way off here. 103 times 0. 0.5, 51,500. Why did I have 60 in my mind? I think I had 130 in my mind, maybe. Uh, in any event, our desired ending inventory for the quarter, this is the one people screw up all the time. Desired ending inventory for the quarter, ending materials for the quarter is not the sum of these three. It's the what we want at the end of March, which is 2,000. So hopefully you're getting used to seeing that. Again, a very common mistake. Don't you make it. 51 plus 2 is 53,500. Our beginning materials for the quarter is the same as the beginning of January. The beginning of the quarter started on January 1st. So the beginning of January, at the beginning of the quarter, we had 1,500 yards of material on hand. Again, not the sum, not the total here. Uh, 53,5 minus 1,500 is 52,000. Five dollars a unit, five dollars a yard, fifty-two thousand times five is two hundred and sixty thousand dollars. And we can just quickly double check that we didn't make any mathematical errors by adding across. Again, it's very possible for that to have this work and have an error in here somewhere, but this is a nice little error check I'm adding from left to right. That bottom row it does add to two sixty, so calculated the same both way doesn't mean we got it right but it's a good sign <laughs> okay uh that's it we've completed a3a we've completed our materials purchases budget one thing left to do click one of those buttons and i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching i know this stuff is challenging so i appreciate that you hung in there and i'll see you in the next video bye bye the next video in our series is right up here, and if you want a supercut of all of the videos in this series, that's the one down below.